Overpower is still overpowered. Forget about Blood Surge because Bloodlands is the new number one. Breathing through tier 100 dungeons, and yes, before you ask bosses, you just hold down your button because we now have infinite essence generation due to your robot providing you with resource support, but also the brand new mutilator plate chest, also giving you even more blood orbs to then unlimited spam your opponents down from the distance. And yes, this might be the absolute best build for the gauntlet to come. Let me give you a feeling for the gameplay loop by jumping into a tier 100 vault. It's quite simple, but couldn't be more fun. We are activating Bone Storm, and then we start lancing. Now, our robot makes things vulnerable for us with a Tempest. We are restoring resource with the robot shooting. And at the same time, we are fortifying with our Bloodlands actually dealing damage because that's what the new Mutilator plate does. So we don't rely on Blood or pick up anymore for fortification. Even without Blood Orbs, we constantly fortify. And we have a permanent barrier going on with our 20,000 life. <laughs> and just shoot through everything. While automatic corpse explosions are happening left, right, and center because of our sacrilegious soul ring. And we are essentially just busy killing opponents with our lances. Very important is that we're using the Decrepify curse, but we're not using it for cooldown reduction. No, there's a second way how you can actually use Decrepify to kill your opponents faster because we don't need the cooldown reduction as we have permanently our things up. And with the flicker step boots, as we dash through something, that is how we're essentially resetting our cooldowns. Quick skill breakdown into the gear because there are some pitfalls here. We're gonna start with hemorrhage into enhanced hemorrhage. While leveling use initiates hemorrhage for the fortify. We do not actually use a basic skill here though right now. Maximum points in Bloodlands together with supernatural bloodlands for the free overpowers and then imperfectly balanced because we do want to have that bonus 15 percent damage increase three points in hoot flash still because we are working with corpses to a degree then we're going down into blood mist with ghastly blood mist that is a good engager sometimes to blood mist in and then get the automatic corpse pull with the ring of sacrilegious souls or just do it manually we do have corpse explosion and corpse explosion is also rocking the plague corpse explosion because we are slowing, stunning, and vulnerable enemies, and our Corpse Explosion does do 8%, x8%, x8% bonus damage. That's nice on top of that, together with Grim Harvest and also Fueled by Death Above Me for the bonus multiplier. And then down here, it gets interesting because we do have Death Reach. That's more damage versus distant enemies, and we are kind of distant to our enemies most of the time. I would like to have Death Embrace, but... To be fair, we're not standing in our enemies most of the time and they get pulled away or killed. Now we also run amplified damage with the curse, right? More curse damage, fantastic. But here it comes now with Decrapify. Decrapify is slow and damage reduction. That's fantastic. 20% damage reduction straight out of the house is great. And then we are also still running that the chance to stun with Decrapify, also good. But we're not going for the cooldown reduction with the Abhorrent. No, we're going for hard Decrapify. When you and your minions hit an enemy afflicted with Decrapify below 10%, they're instantly killed. This works for elites, normal mobs, and not for bosses. But it all in all hires your clearing speed tremendously as you get the damage multiplier and then the slow potential stun or even more damage multipliers versus stun and slowed. And then we're getting the bonus super kill. We don't need the cooldown reduction because we don't have any cooldowns to reduce in that page. Now we also have our corpse tendrils and that needs to be blighted corpse tendrils for blood orbs. We want the blood orbs and they happen when we cast corpse tendrils and when the corpse tendrils get auto cast, which is a nice double trouble. Then gruesome mending for bonus healing with blood skills do more damage and blood skills do more damage. And this is what you want on your amulet because it gives you 15% multiplier and that gets doubled when you're healthy, so it's a 30%. But if I now get another three ranks to this, I go up to 30% in total, which gets doubled to 60%. So a mere three more points gives me a 30% multiplier on all my overpower damage, which is really good on your amulet. And yes, we're not playing the Banished Lords right now. We'll get to that in the gear section. Very important. 
Then we're boosting our damage reduction plus our sacrifice bonuses with attack speed because attack speed is what Blake's Bloodlands really good. Now also Bone Storm with damage reduction and the bonus critical strike chance. Lastly, we're having Rathamus Vigor. And this is so good on Bloodlands because they changed Rathamus Vigor in season two that this timer is reduced by two seconds each time Blood Orbs heal or overheal you for 8,000 life. And here is the basic idea to also splice two last point into Gruesome Mending because Gruesome Mending hires all sources of healing. So whenever a Blood Orb heals you, you heal more to then reduce the cooldown even more. The problem is finding the other two points for this. And the only thing I could technically take out is damage from Plague Corpse Explosion and the radius also from Enhanced Corpse Explosion. As Corpse Explosion is essentially just happening to trigger our fuel by death. And also now our Paragon Board a 40% damage multiplier. So technically, these two points could go out for two more points in Gruesome Mending to then just heal you more and give you more overpower. Without a proper damage meter, it's always hard to test which one is the 10% more damage now. This or the Corpse Explosion. Now to the gear and the star of the show, the Mutilator Plate. This is fantastic. Not only does it give us 25% total armor plus, and yes, with a Mutilator Plate on, we are at 13,500 armor without Disobedience, Juggernaut, anything. Perfect value for tier 100 dungeons. No, it also hires our healing received, which then goes into the Rathmus Vigor power play, and it gives us maximum life and willpower for overpower. But what it says is, you are bloodlanced, so I'm essentially having a bloodlance stuck in me. And whenever I shoot someone else with a bloodlance, that bloodlance in me would deal damage to me. But instead of that, it fortifies me for 2% of your life. So you continuously just fortify. Oh, and every time you shoot out a bloodlance, you have a 5% chance to form a blood orb every single lance. Now that also counts for the lances that are being made by your other skills. Give me a second. Also, Bloodlands deals another 20% multiplicative damage, just like that. Killer. This goes well hand in hand with Gore Quilt on my wand. Casting Bloodlands will consume Blood Orbs to also conjure lances from them. These lances can also trigger the Fortify, mm -hmm, and they can also trigger more Blood Orbs from the Mutilator Plate 5% chance. On the wand, you kind of want critical strike damage, overpower damage, intelligence is nice, and damage to slowed also works. Core skill damage is an option. The mutilator played drops from the Beast of Eyes. I got mine from standard tier 90 plus dungeons. And as you can see, it's straight up 925 item power because tier 90 plus dungeons drop 925 item power. For the real machine gun blood lancening, you take Rathmus Chosen because that gives you 50% plus attack speed when you overpower. And we constantly overpower. On the gloves, you want overpower damage, ranks to Bloodlands, and critical strike chance, plus attack speed would kind of be nice. Intelligence doesn't hurt for the all damage. And now we're coming to our resource generation part, and there's two things you can do, and they're pretty crazy. And I'll show you with an example at the target dummy. The first source of resource is meant for dungeon pushing where there's a lot of enemies, and that is your Ring of Potent Blood. Potent Blood, while healthy, Blood Orbs give you 17 Essence, and I did find a 20 Essence roll. Yes, I get 20 Essence whenever I pick up a Blood Orb, and one Blood Lance only costs 16 Essence. Now, if you're transformed, now if you're using this now in a dungeon with a lot of mobs, you activate your Bone Storm, you start choosing your Lances, you start making corpses, your corpse tendrils happen, and you can see I can just hold down my button, and I literally never run out of resource. And this works exceedingly well the more opponents there are. Because the more opponents there are, the more blood orbs I can make with lances, the more blood orbs I can make with corpse tendrils. I, I'm just infinitely having essence. And what about a single target? What if we're fighting a boss? That's where you every now and then might run out of resource as you're not infinitely just producing orbs. And then you will have to be going into blood mist for a second to produce some more corpses and go on. If the boss doesn't just die beforehand. I mean, you see, we're not really running out. But there's a solution for this right now. And that would be Circle of Exposed Flesh, which gives us the 10% chance to generate 42 Essence on vulnerable enemies. Now, this was really good in Season 2 because we could make everyone vulnerable with a Cursed Touch. Our Corpse Tendrils can't make vulnerable, and our source of vulnerable is our Robot with the Breaking Support. The problem with the Breaking Support is, and also the Tempest, 
that the robot is sometimes lagging behind. So in actual dungeon pushing where I'm zooming forward, it's just not making it vulnerable enough to use this really during dungeon pushing. But if we're fighting a single target that my robot continuously makes vulnerable, I can just stand here, hold down my two button, use the lucky hit for my lances, use the lucky hit for my corpse explosion, my corpse tendrils to also have my essence just keep running. And then if I ever run out, I might have to blood miss shortly, have everything restored, and then you continue continuing on. And the more lucky hit you have, the better this is. I mean, like you notice how this is, you know, I can just hold down my button here and we can just stand here for the next 20 minutes and you know, like we'll, we'll just infinitely go on. For that method, you definitely gotta make sure to wear a wand because a wand is intrinsic lucky hit and you want a ring. This one right now has 3.7% lucky hit and is not upgraded with also a lot of lucky hit and your, your gloves, lucky hit would be preferable. Plus your helmet should have lucky hit on barrier. So that's where you need to adapt your gear to what is there. And I would recommend to have a bend of exposed flesh with you whenever you're pushing normal tier 100 to the boss, even though with a loop of potent blood, you just also don't really face any issues in the dungeons. My pants are providing us with barium on bone storm. Super important, especially with our offend. And here we want total armor percentage, maximum life, and then damage reduction and damage reduction. In my case, it's overall damage reduction and damage reduction while fortified. These might actually be absolutely S tier pants and I will not find any better in like for the whole season. The offense is the Littlest Wall and the Littlest Wall is making bonus bone storms. I found this in the open world. I found three Littlest Walls in the open world and one in a tier 90 vault. But you can get that from Lord Zier by doing Legion events and world bosses. The Littlest Wall allows you to have infinite bone storms and I have a 20% roll here, which gives me a 95% chance for more bone storms. And I can have five in total of them. This together with the pans provides me just infinite barrier. So I don't have to worry about losing life, fortify anything. I can just keep zooming through the nightmare dungeon. Now, there is something to be said about the gauntlet because the gauntlet might only be a tier 70 dungeon where the damage is way lower than a tier 100. In this case, we can actually get rid of the Littlest Wall and use a focus, which will make things way more interesting for this build as well. We'll get to that in the amulet section. First, let's talk about the boots, which are flicker step. They can be had from Duriel, which is Barshan for X, and Grigor with the Steel from Hell Tights or the Shards of Agony. And then you farm some Duriel and you get the flicker step. That makes your Bone Storm even more deadly, damage reduction from clothes. But whenever you dash through enemies, you now get a cooldown reduction. Usually my Bone Storm is running always, simply always. And now when I dash through enemies, I as well reduce the cooldown that just in case I have a span where there's no opponents. I straight up can activate it again. So it's always running and I always have the cooldown ready and I don't have to use the Crepify for cooldown reduction and I can kill my enemies faster with the Crepify. Helmet. Before you ask, no, it can't be Holocon Crest because Helmet is running Embalmer. Assuming a corpse has a 30% chance to spawn a Blood Orb. So we get more Blood Orbs. I wish you could hire this chance, but sadly it's only 30%. It has total armor, maximum life and intelligence. The all stats is nice, but I might reroll the all stats into Lucky Hit while Barium. That's good for more corpse production with Hood Flash, but that's also good for Exposed Flash if you're running that ring to just really always hit that for more resource. Now, ring number two is the Ring of Sacrilegious Souls from Varshan for the Corpse Explosion for free, for the Corpse Tendrils for free. And we're actually more using this for the Corpse Tendrils than for the Corpse Explosions. But again, it also provides lucky hit chance, maximum life, maximum essence. Maximum essence is also very good to provide us with the bonus of the Paragon board, 49% multiplicative damage. So this is quite nice. Now to the amulet. This amulet is from my other build, but I haven't found one with Tides of Blood on it. To repeat, you want Tides of Blood for this 60% multiplier in total. And right now it's running Corpse Tendrils because your critical strikes can overpower and your overpowers can critical strike. And if you're now having 3,000% overpower and 600% critical strike damage. Well, you notice how these two things can kind of nicely work together and go bonkers crazy for multi-million overpowers and give that another 48% multiplier. Well, yeah, it's too good to say no to. What you definitely want on your amulet is total armor. Total armor is just too good, bringing us to the 13.5K, which is the armor cap for tier 100 dungeons. And we wanted Tides of Blood. Also, Essence Reduction would be fantastic, so we can have our Blood Lances be 20% cheaper on top of that. Super good. 
Lastly, movement speed maybe. Wouldn't hurt. Now as an alternate emulate, you could play the Banished Lord's Talisman, which gives you another 104% damage to your overpower critical strikes. But here we get to the problem. If I put this amulet on, where am I then going to put my corpse tendrils? Because the attack speed on the gloves are needed to be the machine gun bloodlands, to just go away because else your clearing speed will just feel atrocious. Then we also do need the bloodlands blood orb casting. And well, we do need the resource protection from our potent blood ring. And then we need the Ring of Sacrilegious Souls for the Corpse Tendrils, so the Loop of Potent Blood works, so the Gore Quilts work, and that all works together with a Mutilator Plate. You see my problem. And lastly, we need the Litless Wall to have permanent Bone Storms up for bonus critical strike chance, damage reduction, and barrier. Yeah. <laughs> so if we're using the Banished Lord's Talisman, you would essentially have to either get rid of attack speed, making you feel slower, which could be mitigated by having even more attack speed on your gloves, but I mean, that's plus 50%, so gonna be harsh to mitigate that in some way and lastly we're also losing attack speed if we put the littlest wall away could be using a focus here but the littlest wall away also loses us armor again because the focus doesn't actually provide armor we're down to 10.5k armor as well and this is where i currently decide to just say no it's fine to not play the banished lord's talisman yes it gives you 100 bonus multiplier on your critical strike with overpower but your critical strikes are high enough and we get already a 30% multiplier on all our overpowers, not only the crit overpowers with the Tides of Blood. So it's fine to say no to Banished Lords for essentially putting out twice the amount of Blood Lances. Because what does one higher power Blood Lance use you if I can do twice the amount of overpowered Blood Lances easily in a row, especially with the infinite resource? A quick Varshan or Vashan, however you actually pronounce it, to give you a feeling for the build again. And here we're using the exposed flesh ring right now. Activate Bone Storm, hold down your two button, shoot him, shoot him more, shoot him more. Oh, curse him, don't forget. Then we Blood Mist for a second to make those corpses, to corpse tunnel them myself, more critical strike chance. And then you're holding down your two button again, and that's it. Done. <laughs> Bibbidi bobbidi bobbidi boo. Paragon board into the companion. And we had to redo the Paragon board five times to finally get here. And I kept four points for a bit variety for you. First glyph is Corporeal. It gives us a 10% multiplier on our physical damage. And we're also boosting our armor and all damage here. And technically the last four points could be going like this and like this. But we'll keep them for later because it gives you a bit of choice. That first board we're going into is Flesh Eater. Because Flesh Eater gives us the 40% damage multiplier on five corpses consumed, which we're continuously doing. Also, there's more critical strike damage here for our insane critical strike damage. As the glyph, we're taking Sacrificial because we sacrificed all our minions, another 10% multiplier, boosting also our damage to elites, a little bit the decks, and our resistance to all elements so that we're resistance capped out. Also, as you're getting in here, you can take easily the intelligence and willpower. Make sure to take as much willpower as possible. We'll need that later for the respective nodes. And more willpower is also more overpower damage. We're going out on the right side into the Bloodbath board for the 35% increased overpower damage. Here's a bunch of intriguing nodes because we get damage while healthy and overpower damage. Insane. And we're also getting damage while fortified. The fortified generation doesn't matter, but the damage while fortified is really nice. Also here, even more damage while fortified. And we are constantly fortified. Then we get the Essence Glyph, sadly only with 39 Dexterity. And here you could take another 1-2 to push the Dexterity up to 44. And even another 1-2, take the Willpower here. So this would be now 194, so another 40% Critical Strike Damage bonus, which works really well for the build. I would technically like to take this node for Maximum Life and Damage while Fortified, but I can, for the love of God, not reach in. This leads us into the Send of Death board. Send of Death is too good to not take. Either we get 15% damage reduction if there are corpses. If there are no corpses, we get a 15% damage multiplier. Just use up all the corpses and you do even more damage. It's too nice. And then critical strike, critical strike, critical strike, critical strike. I mean, this is 30%, another 30%, and then 7.5. Also, this board is really good for the Dominate Glyph. 49 willpower can be had in a very easy way plus another 200 armor, and well, I mean, the damage to injured enemies works against bosses. 
but mostly we needed the more overpower and seven willpower is another 55 percent so i mean take it right and then even more critical strike damage now we're going into the bone graph board and here i'm a bit sad that we can't take the maximum life node on tenacity but bone graft has a very intriguing node and that is reinvigorate gives us 16 essence and two essence on kill essence on kill is insane another four essence and another four essence so in total we're getting like 12 16 28 essence plus which works really good with exposed flesh and also potent blood for the bonus essence as if we have more essence in total like 150 here then when we're picking up blood orbs we can get more total essence because now we have 150 and then 15 is the blood lance cost so we can cast 10 blood lances and if i only have 100 essence i cannot cast that many blood lances nor can i regain that much essence to cast more blood lances because well i get more essence than the cost back the glyph here would be bonus vulnerable damage it's not worth it to max this out but it's good to get the 10 percent multiplier and elemental resistance again Sadly, I'm missing like four willpower right now to max this, but I'll get that somewhere on my gear. Now, I am missing out on the Imbiber Glyph, and I cannot take it. It would be damaged while healthy, and that would be a nice multiplier, but there's no way to put it in anywhere. Especially as we go into the last Paragon board now, and that is Blood of Baguettes. The Blood Baguettes board in general is interesting and has a lot of cool nodes with damage while healthy, and also a lot of overpower damage we're missing up here. But there's no way I get into this. Because, like, going from this point all the way up is taking so many points that is not worth it, simply. <sighs> so we are one to take the legendary node, because that is 15% multiplier on picking up blood orbs. And we pick up blood orbs all the time, so it's another 15% multiplicative damage on everything. Too good to ignore. Finally, the robot. What does he do? We have Flesh of Adrenaline. That gives you 12 seconds long, 20% more damage for 12 seconds every 12 seconds now we play this with a safeguard support which would give us a huge chunk of damage reduction 14 percent or 15 percent multiplicative that's nice i would probably replace safeguard support because i'm damage reduction enough through ever night in the long run if i had genesis wouldn't hurt as well i mean making your bonus damage more effective sure why not but i would probably put on ever night for the four more ranks for my blood lances to be more deadly I also have duration support to increase the duration and tactical support to reduce the cooldown to bring it to this 12 and 12 seconds. This gets followed up by Tempest. Tempest happens every 0.8 second, which is insane, right? And I think the attack speed of Tempest also scales with my attack speed. So if I actually get bonus attack speed with the overpower thingies, then Tempest is also happening a bit faster. That's with the breaking support for the 100% vulnerable and the arcing support, which makes Tempest hit 11 enemies. Uh-huh. And lastly, resource support. So every 0.8 seconds, I'm getting 20 resource back on top of my actual resource backening already, which is insane. Here, technically, you could talk out arcing to then also be Evernight if you wanted to. But honestly, I do like the arcing a lot to have the vulnerable spread permanently. And vulnerable is always a challenge for Necro. If you made it to this point, thank you so much. Now, if you're looking to up your vault game, there's a video for you. And if you're interested in a super ass tier bone spirit build, that's an alternative for you.